What's going on, everybody? Um, it's Henry here. It's kind of frozen. So I think I'm going to do a little bit about the astrology. I just kind of want to show you. It really fits with the themes of not being able to um, act in the way that we'd like to. You know, because uh, if we see restriction in the astrology, it doesn't just mean... totalitarianism altogether, you know, it's, um, there's a natural, there's a natural side of it. So, let's see if this worked. Yep, am I still recording? Great. Well, um, I think we'll talk about the annual revolutionary astrology for the spring on this cold day maybe by the time we've done that I can go drive my car so all right so let's um jump over to that I think we need the nope, 2021 okay we can just um, we can just go to that. So it's easier to see how it's going to turn out this way now, isn't it? Well, a few months ago or a month ago, it was a little. Um, I don't know. You know, the planets have to get to this exact place, and I'm definitely not smart enough to tell you exactly how it's going to happen. Even if I've looked over it a few times, there's just so much going on. So, finishing up this month, the Moon, Sun, Venus, Neptune conjunction happens with the sextile to Pluto right there a week before the revolution. So, Quite a quite a powerful event. I think we'll talk about that probably on the monthly report for March. Once Mercury, Mercury retrograde is over and we can really get to work on that kind of stuff. Um, Anyway, guys, so, yeah, the Sun, Venus, and Neptune are all combust. Venus is still approaching the Sun, so they're making a really, really close aspect for that whole week. Venus is going exact for Venus Cassini. <clears throat> Which will not be exact until, um, looks like the, the 26th. So Venus is in the 29th degree of, well, yeah, Venus is in the 29th degree of Pisces, which is a very strange and critical degree. The 29th degree is a critical degree, is the word I use. I don't know if that's in the literature, but. It seems like the right word. It says though, when things are approaching this degree, everything that has to be finished with this energy sort of all comes out. The best, most recent example was um, the um, event at the Capitol building on the January 6th, where all those people stormed the Capitol building. So, this is a similar situation with Venus and Pisces. Now, Venus is exalted in Pisces, but Mars was exalted in Aries, too. I think there's a big potentiality for this energy to get, you know, supercharged over this next week. Uh, with the Sun right there, and Venus having the light from Neptune and Pluto. Um... 
it's hard to imagine that right now, but like think of like spring fashion, like what they're gonna try to do this year. And think of like 2020, 2021 sort of fashion if it's come out this year. Maybe you don't pay attention to that stuff, you know. I it's it's interesting to see how the aesthetic that people choose seems to reflect in the astrology. But there you have it. So what else is going on around that time? So Venus, well, Mercury is in detriment in Pisces as well, making the square to Mars. Let me set this chart exactly for um, this area. Now, the cool thing about this is I'm going to be able to talk about this chart for every region of the world um, as soon as, um, let's see. I'm going to be able to talk about this chart for every region of the world. I'm not going to have to think about fixed charts and movable charts for this quarter. So it's a pretty interesting thing. I might be able to redesign my videos, but that's another thing I'm thinking about. At this time, you know, we're all really just thinking about possibilities. Let's jump back over to the present time. Okay, so, yep, Venus is with Jupiter, Mercury, in Saturn's house. So, although Jupiter will remain in Saturn's house, Jupiter will enter his term by March 15th. It's the Ptolemaic term, if you want to call it that. Um, and Venus will move forward and become exalted in Pisces um, right behind the sun. So honestly, guys, this looks like, for what that represents, it looks awesome. It looks um, like the possibilities for doing different ways of mixing and enjoying and everything that Venus represents, relating, like all these things can blend together in a different way. Um, and I don't know if Mars is ready for that. That's kind of the Mars-Venus square. Venus wants to do these ultimate sort of things, and Mars is in her house, but he's not really much good there, so to speak. Although he's not combusted the sun or under sun's beams. Venus is under sun's beams this whole time, which is like eight degrees around the sun. Um, not the worst thing, but it definitely weakens Venus. So Venus will be a little weak throughout all this, but I feel like the sun being in Pisces as well and under Jupiter, it's, it's okay. It's pretty good, especially with, um, Mercury coming back to meet Jupiter there. All right. Progress. So Mars will enter Gemini. And how long is Mars in Gemini? It's kind of a question I've been thinking about but not researching. Wow, that's quite a day. Look at that. The end of March. Mars is over the North Node. That revolution has occurred. Mercury is leaving the square to Mars. So Mercury got the light from Mars. Mars and Mercury exchange light. So the planets are all relative to light. Light is their um, image or their um, more close type. Um, they're very similar to, they're more like light than they are, um, corporeality, if that makes sense. So, they have corporeal elements, uh, everything works in order in the universe, but Mercury is gonna, get, point being, Mercury is going to gain the light from Mars, 
and pass Mars onto Neptune. So you see how Mercury aligns to the nodes and comes up to Neptune. Oh yeah, this day, that's interesting. The moon is in Venus's house. I don't want to spend too much time on this, but I'm kind of just looking at... So, yeah, so Mars is going to have to square Neptune now that Neptune has this mercurial light from Mars, so... You know, it looks like some... Neptune has a way of destroying boundaries. Um, Neptune is kind of like oil, like an oil field. You know, you see him out, like, if you've been on the coast, like, looking out, looking out and seeing, like, the barges, not a barge, but an oil field, like, a, it's like it's sitting in the water, it's, like, getting the water out. We had that uh, massive pipeline bust in the Gulf these number of years ago. Um, I think they called it the BP oil spill. That probably had a lot to do with Neptune. Uh, Neptune, just, look, just look, look at some gasoline on the side of the road someday. And just think about gasoline. Like, Neptune is kind of a lot like oil and gasoline. Um, breaks boundaries. Uh, I think it's flammable. It's watery. So this might be setting off spark. Uh, for something that needs serious change. Um, and it looks like this Venus... Venus is Kazemi at this point. So Venus is incidentally super strong. Um, people are going to be enjoying themselves a lot, I bet. This is like the, right at the beginning of spring. Just a fun, expansive, explosive party time it looks like people just having a blast working with the restrictions it's and it's in alignment with where we're going in the future but mercury here you know we got to consider what mercury represents so one of the cool things we're going to be able to do looking at these charts um so close to the revolution is we're going to be able to tell okay these are the significators of the revolution and now they're going to move right it's going to be easier to do um, so here we, let's see, um, oh. right, 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 I wanted to look at, um, which, let's see, okay. So Mercury in this revolution is the ruler of the 5th and the 8th house. The house of loss uh, and the house of pleasure and recreation. So I feel like loss in pleasure is definitely something Mercury is speaking of. You know, don't get too long. Like, the message will come through about how we need to limit our enjoying... Um, remember, Mercury has just been talking to Jupiter and Saturn in Saturn's house. You know what I'm saying? So Mercury is going to have the more... It's going to have a message relative to that sort of light, you see? And that is going to be carried into um, Neptune. So the interesting, it's interesting that Net, like it's... um. Jupiter and Saturn's house, Mercury, to Neptune, Mercury, um, with the Mars energy. So, that's something I kind of just want you all to think about as we go into this next phase, because that's kind of the... If you already know about the revolution, and you know about the set of Venus, Sun, Moon, Neptune conjunction, and you pretty much know about the rest of February, you know, that's... That's what we're talking about, you know. That that's the next thing we really have to talk about. 
but wow, look at that. That can be transformative. Because Neptune has a way of breaking down boundaries, and Pluto has a way of transforming things. Um, Neptune has certain significations that seem contradictory, or it's like as if it's kind of hard to hold all of them at once, you know? Nept you know <laughs> have you seen that meme? The guy's like holding the limes, and he's like, oh, I can't hold all these limes. And they're just like falling everywhere. Well, Neptune is kind of like a meme in a certain way. It's, it's like, it's easier to sort of poet, poesy its significations than it is to speak to them in any tangible way. Although, when you see it, you see it, you know? Like, we had a really heavy Neptune day, like, a week ago. It was really cold. And, um... I think that was, like, the only signification that was really going on. And I just, like, got gas. I got an energy drink. Um, there was a guy at the gas station with the gas truck filling it up, just, like, chatting away on his headset with whoever he was talking about, just having a blast, you know? So it's kind of... It's kind of all tied into those themes. And it has a way of making everything very super connected and spiritualized and in right now it's in this Pisces way so just some food for thought don't take it um, too seriously as a prediction I just kind of want to brainstorm like they taught us in school uh, about all this stuff so yeah 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 so Venus Venus moves ahead to the sextile to the north node. You know, yesterday Venus um, moved through the trine to the, the north node. Now Venus will be in alignment with Mars, still under sun's beams, combust now. So Venus energy is not as not as good, so to speak. Um, let's see. Do you guys notice with the um, uh, Aquarius stellium how everybody was, like, um, trying to impeach the president? <laughs> uh, they were trying to get the, uh, the old president impeached. Because the sun was there, too. And the sun was the ruler of the government in the last revolution. And the sun was at the T-square to the nodes of fate. And then the sun sort of moved out of moved out of all of that and it's just kind of like ah <laughs> what what are you doing like what are we doing like we're all at the senate and donald trump is here what do we do i don't know you can kind of see the see the truth in that <laughs> it was uh definitely one way it's like the only thing that was going on and it was super boring like in the background this um impeachment of the former president like come on you all like come on all right so we am coming to april airy season's in full swing it's been in full swing we're just you know venus is in mars's house now and mars is in mercury's house and mercury is with neptune so now it's as if everything's going back to Neptune. It's like, we're, it's like we kind of enter a dreamy sort of energy with this. My goodness, you all. It's like at the end of the month, there's some tensions go on, but I don't know. It's like, wh whatever you need, you all, just pray for it. <laughs> just pray and ask for it, you know what I mean? Because it can be very much better than we, we expect. So, all right. Is there anything more to really say? I'm still frozen in here. Surely there's more to say, but... Mars comes into alignment with Jupiter... Saturn is just sitting on the 
trying to the north node, so. You know, those are powerful forces that aren't in a bad alignment. What we can say. Um, Mercury is coming up to be Kazemi by April with Venus and Uranus. So, kind of keeping my eye on Neptune here. Ooh, looks like all, a lot of that stuff with Neptune really, really finishes up. And um, we've got Taurus themes. Oh, when Taurus season comes around, Venus will be there, Mercury will be there, Uranus will be there, Scorpio Moon will be there, and um, Saturn will be there. So I'm thinking of like I don't know, just thinking about like sad Taurus girl energy. You know what I mean? It's kind of what I'm seeing. But, you know, do, do good, you know, don't, pray to God that he'll give you what you need. Okay, so, all right, tour season, some good, some good moods with um, Capricorn, Capricorn moons, you all, if you're Capricorn moon, you know, you've been You've been having it for a while, so I'm um, I'm right there with you. You know, it's been have been a hard time. What am I going to title this video, y'all? It's kind of a Neptune is still doing stuff in the background with Pluto. Once we get to the end of Taurus season, Taurus is another very mystical sign. I don't really see how you can think that any of them aren't mystical. I just read that description one day. Taurus, a very mystical sign, yet very material. Um, they're all quite mystical, but, you know, especially with the sextile to Neptune, it's going to get pretty... Um, connected and um, but it's just like this borderless boundary crushing thing this way and I think Biden has a lot of Neptune energy the way he wants to destroy the borders and stop the border just like kind of dissolving everything Donald Trump did with the border thing um, just shaking hands with President Z like what are we supposed to think about that you all but I feel like Nep um, I did see a strong indication with Biden and Neptune like in a Rick astrology report um, I have to look go look back at it but Biden really had a strong Neptune in his progress chart I think so Biden has a lot of Neptune themes I I think you know, I don't know. I don't want to predict anything about, you know, what God has in his mind, you know, that he hasn't allowed us to see in his wisdom, so. But Biden has a lot of Neptune energy, in my opinion. We're going to see um, probably some more of that. You know, Saturn has been playing kind of nice this whole time. You notice that? It's kind of like Neptune, and then Saturn comes in when he needs to, to do some... Um, limiting, it looks like, with the fixed energy. There's just a lot of... Um, a lot of limitation around your fixed sign energy. Now, we can consider back, like, the past couple years from now, three years, I guess, um, 
two and a half. Saturn's been in um, a square to the fixed signs this whole time. Do I want to go back and look at that? I guess I just want to kind of talk about how that was. Um, well, yeah, I kind of don't even want to think about that, guys. It's like so much. Yeah, so Saturn was like exerting influence on the cardinal signs with Pluto for a long time. But I don't see any like heavy hardcore cardinal squares. I guess the one that's the most memorable is Mars square Saturn all year. It's like So I guess that they don't last forever, you know. I guess with uh, Jupiter, Saturn, square Uranus, it is going to go on for a while. That's like the biggest axis of a square that we have that just keeps on giving. Um, praise God. Praise God. So I think we're, we're starting to overreach ourselves at this point. But I just kind of wanted to do this sort of video as I um, warmed up my car. I'm like, try to go scrape it now. So, all right, y'all. I think I'll put this up um, by the end of the day. So, title it just talking. Something like that. But. We'll definitely talk more about Mars going into Gemini as we come up. And that what that trying to Saturn really is about. But, uh... Yeah, you guys. I hope God gives me the opportunity to keep thinking about these things with you. In Jesus' name, by the wisdom of God. God bless you. Amen.